It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oh. Good job. Okay. Good choice. So in level three leash skills, we're going to introduce the long leap. Because in order to have long-term success with my dog, I need to give them an outlet for their natural behavior, which is very active. If I'm expecting to get my dog's energy out just based on walking loose on a leash, I'm going to have a very frustrated dog. I'm going to have an unrealistic expectation, and I'm setting myself and my dog up for failure. I need the time that my dog's on a regular leash to be about obedience and providing structure in a positive way. So I can have him in more situations that I want to put my dog in. A uh, short lead is about me and my expectations and where I want my dog to have the ability to go. But it's not about my dog's enrichment. Whereas this is about my dog's enrichment. He's not quite responsible enough to be off lead, but this is the first step to do so. And if I have a dog that is reactive to other dogs or has too much energy, they go over threshold on a short lead, I need to first provide them structure on the short lead. And then once I can provide them structure, I need to provide them an outlet. And this is what that is going to provide that outlet. So he has a positive association with coming back to me and checking in with me because of the reps that we've done on the short lead. Wow. When I'm using the long lead, I'm not dealing with all of this and trying to manage how long I want him to go and everything. I completely ignore the long lead. I attach my regular leash to it, and this is my tool. If I need to move him away from something, I'm simply going to move away from him. If he's not paying attention to me and I say off, I'm not going to go up to him and try and force him off. I'm going to move away from him until he gets to the end, and then I'm going to give him the physical communication just like I would with a normal short lead. It's just 25 feet instead of 5 feet. So he's walking. He's naturally walking on a short lead. He's only getting physical communication if he goes to the end of the lead. He's at the end of the lead. Off. Pops. I acknowledge as soon as he starts to come to me. I acknowledge the action of him coming to me, not just sitting. I also acknowledge him sitting. Now he's an act of obedience. I give him a treat. I release him. Okay. And now we're walking. Very good job, baby boy. And if I can do this sort of enrichment for him for 30 to 45 minutes every day, every other day, then he's not going to have the same interactions that he could have on a short lead because he has an outlet for his energy. He knows that, okay, I have to act appropriately now because I'm going to have the outlet in the future to do what I want to do. If I don't provide an outlet for my dog to do what they want to do, then they're going to find a way to get that outlet in ways that are not ideal, which often goes into reactivity with other dogs or even people. So if you notice, he's choosing to be in a passive heel even though he's got 25 feet. I'm going to reward him for that. He doesn't need to be like that, but I am going to acknowledge and shape that behavior with, if he stays in there long enough, giving him a few extra treats. I'm going to give him treats when he does something that I ask or if he walks passively in a heel. I can also, if he does this a little too much, I can also communicate that I don't want him to do it. And my command for that is go. I said it, and he stopped paying attention. Very good, puppy. Go. There we go. <laughs> good job. Good job. We'll walk out here. This is also where I'm going to get a consistent come when called, where we introduce it on the short lead, but we're going to really start to reinforce it on the long lead because he's much farther away from me. So when I call him, I'm gonna mark when he starts to come towards me, and I'm gonna mark when he finishes coming into the position I ask him to, and go into active obedience. 
This actually does become a little bit harder with dogs that are so good at it that they just stay with you. But also, they're going to be more inclined to just being in a passive heel when they go off leash also. So there's a yin and a yang to it. But I want him to get on a smell, get distracted, so that I can call him, call him into a heel, call him into active obedience, and try and get up to 500 reps of a come when called that are 100% successful, and I only have to say once. So if I have a come when called, done. I want to say it once and then make it happen. If he did not come to me, then I would have just continued to back up and then gave him leash pops until he started coming to me. The moment he started coming to me, I would acknowledge it by clicking. Once he came to me, I would lure him into the position I wanted him to be in. Usually healed, but not always. You can do center if you like center. And then we release him. So coming to me is an acknowledgement of going into active obedience no matter what he's doing no matter where he is very very good baby boy you're too good aren't you you're too good we're gonna have to go get sage so that we can show some less good behavior on a long lead our training philosophy is to be able to give our dog the opportunity and freedom to make the correct choices and then guide them to what those choices are with clear communication. So she's not paying attention. She's over there. That's awesome. She can do that. She is in an enriching environment. But I also need her to stop what she's doing and choose to check in with me, okay? Periodically, because she knows that she's not going to lose the freedom by coming in and checking in with me. She's going to always be able to get that freedom back, and that is the relationship that we are building. And since she's making the choice to do it herself, I'm not forcing her to do so. It's going to be consistent and it's going to be something that is a long-term and reliable skill. I want my dog to be able to go out into the environment, sniff, explore, and confidently be excited come. to come back to me, drop what they're doing, and give me their undivided attention until I release them. If I never give my dog the opportunity to come out here and not listen to me and fail, then I'm never going to get to the point, okay, that they're going to make the decision themselves to be obedient towards me. If she's only on a five foot lead and I'm constantly yanking on her, saying the same command multiple times, she's going to have a negative association with interacting with me. I don't give her freedom. I don't give her choice. She's frustrated. She doesn't have the opportunity to decide what is best for her. And I'm not creating any sort of trust. Off. Out. Good job. Off. She's gaining repetitions of making the correct choice to ignore them, to not get to the end of the leash, or to check in with me. Off! I didn't pull or yank her on the leash. She just simply ran to the end, something I don't have control over, but is going to be a learning experience for her. Off! If I want her to pass these dogs without the interaction that she's having right now, I'm going to keep her in active obedience. And I have the length of her attention span. Ah, ah. Negative marker because she was doing it wrong. Until I pass... Okay, and release her. Now she's moving on. She's not chasing those dogs anymore. 
So that's how we can get out of that sort of situation. If I'm like, oh no, I don't have control. I'm not giving good, consistent information for her to succeed passively. Then I move to active obedience, which is what it's used for. If she's over threshold in an environment, then I go into active obedience in order to get her out of that situation as safely as possible. There's going to be moments that you're going to want to teach her through making her own choices in passive obedience. And then there's going to be other times where we can't risk that. We have to look professional or whatever the case may be for safety, maybe. And then we have to go into active obedience to set them up for success in a very reliable way. But I can only do that if she has a positive association with going into active obedience. Sage. You want to do this for 30 to 45 minutes every day, every other day, fairly consistently in order to get your dog's energy out. A tired dog is a more obedient dog. If my dog has a hard time focusing on my act of obedience, does not like listening to my communication, even though I'm doing everything right, I'm probably not giving them the exercise that they need to set them up for success. If I keep my dog in the house all day and walk them for 20 minutes a day, I can't expect them to be obedient in the 20 minutes that they have to get their energy out. It's unrealistic and it's not taking care of your dog. Taking care of your dog is having an outlet for them and being disciplined enough to think about what they need and making sure that we provide it for them. If you think you can't provide it for them, I almost guarantee you can. Everybody's got a school right down the street from their house and it doesn't matter what hours you work, you can before after or in the middle of your time off you can spend 30 to 45 minutes at a park at a school and provide them the enrichment that can change their lives and help them make the choices that they need to succeed so let's say we have a dog that is above threshold reactive to other dogs and we're practicing long lead stuff with them how do we do that safely one we make sure our collars fit appropriately to where they can't break it or pull out of it but then also we want to strategize. We have a person with three dogs over here and we have a 25 foot lead. So it's my job to keep longer than 25 feet away. So if she goes sprinting at those dogs, then she would hit the end. She would come back to me. We would get reps of her offing. We'd get reps of her coming. If she's able to be under threshold and still listen to all the rules of the environment, what I actually want to do is I want to stay with that group of dogs for as long as possible because I want it to have a neutral association with dogs in this environment and understand that just because there are other dogs or animals or kids or whatever the case may be doesn't mean she's allowed to approach them. So, off! Good job. So I got to stay appropriately away from these dogs, but I also am not going to run away from these dogs especially if my dog is an over threshold or reactive dog. This is desensitizing her to seeing dogs, being around dogs and understanding just because there are dogs here doesn't mean she's allowed to approach them. When she's able to be an off leash dog one day, she needs to understand that in this setting, she's never allowed to approach other dogs or other groups of people. And the only way that that's possible is if we desensitize her to those actions. So I'm not going to avoid and run away. I'm going to be safely as close to that bubble as possible while keeping my dog below threshold as to associate this with a lifestyle and not with something like the adrenaline or dopamine they might feel when seeing another dog, which is very common for a reactive dog. And the way that we get that to overcome is through things like this, where I have a dog over here I have dogs over here and we are staying in the bubble. So if she was feeling a lot of emotions, adrenaline and dopamine for this, it would pass because those are things that are instantly gratifying. Meaning she sees the dog, she starts getting adrenaline, she starts getting dopamine. And then if I stay with them after a minute or two, they're going to stop having that intensity 
and therefore they're going to have less intense emotions towards it. And then they'll start being able to listen to the communication that I'm giving if I'm giving it clearly. Sage. And then I acknowledge all the positivity and I just reinforce the passive structure. She's not allowed to pull on the leash. So I'd, be, I'd say off and I'd give leash pops if she was over threshold with these dogs. If she was unable to listen, I would fold my cards, control her physically the best that I could with the tools that I have. And then I would wait a minute, two minutes at a safe distance until her adrenaline and dopamine subsided. And then I would start to guide her and I would only acknowledge the positivity. I don't want to punish my dog because they're feeling those sorts of ways. The only thing that's gonna happen if I punish my dog for feeling some type of way is my dog's not gonna to wanna to interact with me when they are feeling that way because they have a negative association with that feeling. Punishing our dog for how they feel is never going to help the situation. We need to strategize and desensitize our dogs to the hormones like adrenaline and dopamine that they're feeling based on sources outside of our control, like seeing another dog at a park. <laughs>